This rotating slider down here is a super cool feature. Someone emailed me and asked if this was possible in Squarespace 7.1, and ha, ah, it is. It's a little bit different. It doesn't have the, uh, it's not a smooth scrolling thing, but it's pretty cool, and best part, it's super simple to set up on your website, just a few lines of code, and uh, that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's go over how to do this rotating slider. First, uh, I have a newsletter. It goes out every month-ish or, month or so. Uh, if you're interested in more Squarespace stuff, tutorials, resources, sign up for this. I don't spam you, don't bombard you. Super helpful. Uh, but if you don't want to, don't have to. So here's the code. Very simple, like I said, just a little bit. Um, if you just want to grab this, copy and paste it, and throw it into your website, go for it. I have the code below this video. Uh, but if you want to learn how this code actually fits in and what's actually going on, then stay tuned and I will go over all of that right now. So first thing we're going to do is adjust the styles and the layout in our website. Okay, so here we go. I have a just a standard 7.1 template. If you look here, I've added in, these are all the SEC schools. I went to Auburn, so I'm a big SEC fan. I've added in, if I hit this plus section for a section, this gallery block, okay? Now I've gonna, I'll just click on one of these, and if you change the settings here, you can change this to slideshow reel, okay? Then it's gonna change it here. Uh, I have it, I think, on inset. I've changed the viewport down to as low as it can go, which is 40, but we're gonna make it even smaller using our code, and everything else can be the same. Another thing to note, though, is all of the images that I added in, I created a Keynote, uh, which is Max PowerPoint, and I put all of these images, after I downloaded them from Google, I put them into the same aspect ratio, 19 by, or 9 by 16, I think it was, uh, image. So, if you don't put them in the same aspect ratio image, it's going to, I don't know what just happened there, that's weird. Uh, it's going to make it'll make everything look a little weird and it might distort them. So resize all your images first before you put them in. That's just a good rule of thumb as we get going here. So looks like this is sort of tweaking out on me. I'm gonna refresh the page. That's probably best. Squarespace seven point one still uh, has some bugs in it and stuff. That's just something something good to remember. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get this uh, the layout of this gallery block where we want it. So I'm going to go over here. Here is a new here is a new page I was playing around with, um, and you can see it is exactly how it is in our back end. So I'm going to open up our inspector. I'm going to grab my selector here. I open the inspector again. Command Option I. That does it. Um, if you're on Safari, Chrome, uh, for a Mac, of course. Um, and I know you can do it for Windows as well. And then I'm going to hover over to my gallery side. You can see the green is the padding, the blue is the element. Uh, the green is the padding, though. So this is what I want to change. So I'm going to go over here. Actually, first, let's select. First, I'm going to select just our data section ID. So this is going to allow me to... Uh, segment all the code that I apply just to this one section okay and for this is a data segment ID that is a data attribute so in CSS the syntax are these square brackets so I'm going to paste that in there and then do our CSS curly brackets after there anything within these curly brackets is going to only be applied to this selector which again is just this, what's hover, colored in blue right there, just that section. Now I'm going to select within that section our gallery reel. So a gallery reel that is a class right here, and those are denoted with a dot. So dot gallery reel, curly brackets. And then I'm going to go padding uh, right, let's do zero pixels. And then, so it looks like it did it over there, perfect. And then padding left, zero pixels. There we go. So that is coming together. And then I want to change the height. Let's change it to 20VH. VH, uh, nothing changed there. So let's throw in 
an important tag to let CSS know I'm super serious about this. Okay, that looks like it's the right height, but it is cropping those images. Now I've noticed this is sort of just a bug in the way Squarespace CSS works. It should just be applied and resized automatically, but it doesn't. So I'm gonna hit save and refresh this page. And I'm also gonna do just refresh our page over here. And there it is, so it's the right size. And again, it's the right size over here. It just doesn't, it doesn't uh, resize automatically when you change the height. And this VH is our, our viewport height, which is 20% of this box. So whatever our viewport is, it will be, it will take up 20% of it. So that's what 20 VH means. Okay, then the other thing, we wanna make these all black and white. Now this is one of my favorite sort of CSS things. Uh, let's go back, I'll show you where I'm grabbing. Again, let's pull up our selector. Now if I hover over this, you can see it pulls me to this div, this gallery click-through wrapper. I really wanna just select one of these images and apply a black and white filter to it. But this is not just one of those images, it's all of them. So I'm going to just hover up and down on my HTML on the right to see if I can find something that will just highlight an image. That's not it, so I'm gonna drop this one down. So it looks like this is it. So this is our figure, this is a figure. This is an HTML tag. Again, I could do dot gallery real item in our CSS. I could do uh, brackets data slide URL to select this one. I'm gonna do figure because each one of these little uh, images is a figure. So I'm gonna paste in figure. Again, no dot or dot would be a class. Hashtag would be an ID. Brackets would be a data attribute. Uh, but HTML tags don't need anything. So again, those curly brackets. Then I'm gonna apply filter colon grayscale and then throw in 100% in there. 100% gray. And so that is a shift tab that'll get it aligned there. So there we go. Now those are all um, those are all black and white. See if I did a 50% it'd sort of desaturate all the colors a little bit. If I did 80% it's almost all black and white. And then of course 100% is the whole thing. So that's pretty cool. So there we go. Now, now this is sort of looking how we want it. I'm gonna hit save. This is looking how we want it. Uh, let's see, this is what our code looks like. This is what I said earlier, perfect. You just copy and paste that in there. Next, let's add the jQuery in. So, what is this jQuery going to do? Um, the jQuery, you see we have these little buttons on the side that slide through. jQuery is a JavaScript library that will allow us to, through code, it will just automatically press this button every few seconds. It's like a little robot that's on your page. It adds another cursor and it just presses that button. Invisible to you, no one can see it. But that's what this code is going to do. So the first thing we have to do is tell our website, hey, I'm gonna be using jQuery and I want you to be able to understand it. If we don't tell our website, we need you to understand jQuery, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna to go to settings, advanced, code injection, and in the top, I'm going to paste this code, which is basically saying, we are going to pull in the jQuery library to our entire website, because this is gonna be applied to the header tag on every page of our website, and I want you to be able to read the jQuery library anytime I open a page on my website. Now we're gonna go back, gonna hit edit on our page, and then go into our settings by the gear icon, advanced, and now we're gonna post our jQuery code in there. And this is sort of jQuery mixed with JavaScript. Uh, we'll just paste it right there. This, obviously the syntax of this is a lot more confusing than CSS, um, but essentially what this is saying is we have an interval function that's gonna repeat this code within the interval function every 2,000 milliseconds. So if you wanted it to be right now, um, it's gonna go every two seconds, um, but you can change that to 2000 milliseconds. And this is what it is selecting, the button it's selecting. So again, if I go back over here, go to our, let's refresh the page so we get the most common should be black and white for us. 
Uh, if I get my selector and I hover over this button that I want my jQuery to, to move, to select, um, you'll see that here is our gallery reel control button. I want it to hit this control button. However, we also have another gallery reel control button, the exact same class. And so if I just put in gallery reel control button, this one right here, it wouldn't know which one to press. It might press both and then nothing's really gonna happen. So what I did was I added this piece of, uh, this selector up here, which is our top level, gallery reel control, right? And then grab nth of type, so grab the second class on the page that is gallery reel control. So we have our first gallery reel control, then our second gallery reel control. And then within this is our gallery reel control button. And so that's why I put that next. And so that's how I created that selector. And then we have 2000 milliseconds. I could change it to just one, but let's just keep it at two. You can change that to whatever you want it to be. Hit save and done because the jQuery on the page is going to refresh. And we're golden. Check that out. That's pretty neato. All right, so what's next? Now we gotta remove the buttons, right? We got these little buttons here. We wanna remove those. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back into our CSS. Again, we have our, uh, our, our developer tab open here on the right. I'm gonna click this hover button, hover over that, just what we were looking for. Uh, we don't really want any of this gallery real controls. Um, we don't want any of those, so I'm going to just highlight that. And just within this, our gallery reel here, you see it's green here, close there. Above that, I'm going to hit dot because it's a class. Add in some more and just hit display none. And now they are gone. Oh, yeah, forgot to mention. Okay. There is, uh, because we put in that code and this is automatically sliding. So remember that code is actually, it is hitting that button that was here. So it's clicking that button every single time, which is great, but it, it adds in a little bit of an, a problem if you are trying to edit something else on the page. So let's say I want to edit this image block. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to come over, wait, hold on. I'm going to come over here, edit the image block, but wait. Why can't I, it won't, it doesn't stay up because it's automatically hitting this button every single time. So you won't be able to edit any other elements on your page as this code is running. So it's just important to note, whenever you want to edit something else on your page, hit your gear icon, go back to advanced, put two forward slashes in front of each one of these code lines. Once you do that, it is going to stop the code. The forward slash means it's a note. Hit save, hit done. It's a little onerous, but it's, it's a small price to pay. Um, and now we can go in and edit different elements on our page because it's not going through and running that code. See, I can jump in here and edit my image block. So just remember that if you ever want to edit something and this code is running, it's, it is the computer is thinking you are hitting that button and so it won't be able to edit anything else. You won't be able to edit anything else on your page. And there we go. There you have it. Now we have an automatic scrolling slider on our website. How fun is that? I hope you all found this informative. There's your CSS. Uh, again, I have a newsletter. If you want to learn more of this stuff, uh, sign up for that. I have more on my website as well. Uh, leave me a note in the comments if you like this or if you have any more questions, let me know. Also, send me an email. I'm always looking for more ideas for tutorials to do. Send me an email of what you want to do at your website, um, and I would be happy to help you out. Hope you enjoyed.